Today, I would like to explore with you one of my favorite Barolo single vineyards, uh, Rocche dell'Annunziata, which is obviously a subzone of La Morra. Annunziata is a small, uh, cute hamlet, and in turn, it's also a Barolo geographical mansion, and a big one. It's more than 100 hectares. Rocche dell'Annunziata is a smaller patch of only 29 hectares. It's a beautiful amphitheater of uh, pure Tertonian soil uh, with different elevation from a minimum of 250 meters above sea level all the way up to 380 meters. And the exposure changes as the hill turns around from, from southeast at the very top, it turns towards south, uh, southwest in the lower part. Several producers feature a Barolo Rocca dell'Annunziata and I have counted at least 14 of them. But today I've chosen a sample from a producer that I respect, Renato Ratti. This is his uh, 15 Barolo Rocca dell'Annunziata. And it's also an opportunity for me to remember the long friendship between my father Gigi and late Renato Ratti. In the early 1950s, both Gigi and Renato got their first job at uh, Cinsano's. For a few months, they share the office and the position of young enologists until uh, a position opened in Brazil. It was offered to my father, who turned it down, and it was offered to Renato Ratti, who accepted it. So Renato left for Brazil and worked there as an enologist uh, for five years, from 55 to 60. But their friendship remained and it's proven by an exchange of letters. I have at least 50 letters that Renato wrote to my father in those years and I assume my father answered. And in those letters I found a very, um, a very profound evidence of their friendship and their reciprocal interest in learning more about winemaking. In one of those letters uh, they even considered starting a winery together which uh, didn't happen because when Renato came back from Brazil, he started his own uh, winery. And a few years later, my father started his own winery in Castiglione Falletto. But the lives were in a way parallel and uh, they would have continued for a long time if it weren't for the fact that Renato uh, unfortunately died very young. And then uh, his, um, his nephew Massimo Martinelli continued the production, the person whom I also very, very much respect. And now finally his son, Pietro um, is responsible for the winery, and this is his wine. I trust that this bottle is very representative of Rocca dell'Annunziata, and I want to taste it with you. Pietro also had a documentary filmed about uh, his father Renato, and one of Gigi's uh, last interviews uh, is, uh, is in this documentary where he uh, remembers uh, his friend. Um, if you're interested, uh, link in the description box below. The color is uh, really the classic Barolo Garnet, very clear, deep, uh, very well preserved. Wow, I love it. It's very open, uh, very extroverted, expressive. Uh, there's still some flowery notes uh, like uh, violets, but uh, lots of sweet fruit and uh, candied fruit, orange peel, and uh, very nice uh, spices, mostly vanilla and cinnamon. Um, it's a generous, uh, um, expressive, open Barolo, very friendly. Very smooth, long, coherently with the expectation of the bouquet. Um, it's, uh, it's friendly and subtle, also, also in the mouth. Uh, there's a touch of nice oak, certain persistent in the middle, has a good heart, has a good body right there on your tongue. And then the aftertaste is really smooth, very, very soft, a little understated, but long and very, very pleasing. So it's, uh, it's extremely elegant. I would say, if I had to describe it in one word, I would say really, really very elegant. And in a way, this is the expectation that we have from Rocche dell'Annunziata, which is known for having good body, good structure, not excessive, 
but it's never austere like some Barolos from Monforte and Serralunga. What we expect from La Morra, and in particular from Rocca dell'Annunziata, is really uh, the gentle Barolo, uh, the soft, uh, seducing Barolo. And this is absolutely a good example of this description. You know, Renato Ratti was one of the greatest innovators in the history of Barolo. I remember a discussion with my father when he said that a well-made Barolo should have been drinkable already at the fourth year. Contrary to the tradition that Barolo should have been kept much, much longer in the barrel and then in the bottle. Well, obviously, this is particularly true of a Barolo of this caliber coming from La Morra and from Rocca dell'Annunziata. The grapes, the material you're working with is ideal for these Barolos that are already showing very, very well in the first year of their life. And again, 15 also helps. It's a very open and, and, and very pleasant uh, vintage. Certainly, this is an outstanding example of Renato's theory of uh, young, expressive Barolos.